There is lots of videos on YouTube showing how to bypass online age verification just by using some game character's face. I hate to say this, but they aren't that stupid. They know how you bypass their control system. They let you bypass it, for now. But once this spreads to other countries, which is very likely to happen because Europe is pushing for this as well, they will make it impossible to bypass. For example, this person uses the face of another individual who is in fact an adult, but it turns out their verification system is smart enough to detect that she's trying to trick the system. Bypassing this won't be an option for a long. The best you can do is find alternatives and stop using any service that wants to scan your face. Big Tech and the governments don't want you using alternatives because it hurts their business model. No data means no money for them, so the best thing you can do is use alternatives. Spotify was one of the first companies threatening to delete users' accounts if they didn't comply with face scanning. If we take a look at Spotify's official website, they tell us, if you cannot confirm that you're old enough to use Spotify, your account will be deactivated and eventually deleted. What this really means is, if you don't let us scan your face, we will delete your account. And if we go to the top of the webpage, we can see that Yodi is Spotify's provider for face scanning. On Yodi's website, they of course tell us to be compliant, which is disgusting in itself. They even prepared this dystopian video to show us what they intend for our future. The problem isn't that they want to face scan people. The problem is that there are people who are okay with having their face scanned. There's this website, Page X-Ray, where you can paste a link from any internet site, then it will show how many advertising requests, tracking requests and other requests the website makes. Scrolling down, we can see that Spotify shares data with all these websites. And those sites share the data with even more websites. So it's interesting to see that Spotify shares data with Snapchat and Google. Discord isn't any better. On their official website they have the screenshot where they tell people we need to scan your face and their provider is KID. Let's take a look at KID's website. Honestly, looking at this turns my guts up and down, it's disgusting. These psychopaths really try to make what they are doing look like a good thing, but it's not, it's disturbing. Sure, let them scan your kid's face, let them scan everybody's face because it's totally normal. Think about it, remember when you were a kid? Could you imagine growing up in a world where your parents teach you to scan your face for everything you do on the internet? It's weird, I couldn't find KID on Wikipedia, but Yodi is on Wikipedia. How is it that there is almost no information at all about a service who wants to scan millions of people's faces? Isn't that suspicious? And for those of you who don't know, Wikipedia at the top level is run by the CIA. Yeah, this isn't a conspiracy. If you don't believe it, go research it. How many of you have seen the movie Minority Report featuring Tom Cruise where it's all about predicting future crimes that didn't happen yet? Well, what previously sounded like sci-fi is now a reality as the UK is building a Minority Report-like system to predict future crimes. Okay, Jad, what's coming? Double homicide, one male, one female. Killers male, white, 40s. Set up a perimeter and tell them we're on route. I'm placing you under arrest for the future murder of Sarah Marks. Give the man his hand. The future can be seen. Let's take a closer look at Nexus Mod's statement. EU users, age verification will follow once laws in your region require it. Why are they talking about laws that don't even exist yet as if they knew that they will be enforced anyways? That makes it sound like behind closed doors the European Union is preparing to mandate all member states to push age verification and face scanning everywhere in Europe. But let's be honest, Nexus Mods has been going to shit since a while already. It's said that the most popular modding website bans people for creating mods that remove pronouns from games. This is what happens when ideology overtakes common sense. It's also worth noting that Russia is now forcing a state-controlled messenger app on all new phones in the country. But as a European I'm particularly worried about Europe because we're supposed to be a democracy but now the EU has developed its own state-level app to not only verify your age but also use it for online transactions regarding the digital euro which is set to launch very soon. Needless to say that any person using the digital euro will entirely give up their financial privacy making them a puppet of the state. And all this is happening while the EU bans other cryptocurrencies like the privacy coin Monero, 
and at the same time keeps enforcing lower limits on how much cash you are allowed to spend in transactions. It's also important to know that the original paper of the digital euro said it would replace cash. There is another topic I want to talk about. Portmaster is a must have for any Windows user. So if you're using Windows and you're watching this now, go get Portmaster. This free open source firewall gives you full control over your computer's connections. If I click on my LibreWolf browser, it shows me all the recent connections and if I click on these connections, it will even tell me the IP address, the main name and the name from the company from which the connection came. It will also show which executable is responsible for the connection attempt. Clicking the app symbol will provide us with a world view so we can see to how many countries our computer is or was recently connected to. If you want to, for example, block Windows Update or Microsoft entirely, you can easily do so by using the settings icon, all the way down where it says Big Tash, expand that, and there you go, Microsoft is blocked. So when I go to my web browser now and try to connect to any Microsoft service, it will immediately be blocked. Europe is facing an absolute critical moment right now. After years of debate, the chat control law could before the end of the year become the new mass surveillance reality of Europe. Right now we have a problem because 15 member states support the surveillance law. If you don't want to scan your face for everything you do online, follow my instructions. Click contact your MPs. Select what's important to you. Then click next and review and send. Select a country. I advise pressuring Germany because they are currently undecided. Next, click on select all to contact all your representatives at once. Finally, at the bottom of the website, copy both the email addresses of the representatives and the message. When you did that, log into your mail, paste the things you copied and send it. If enough people do this, politicians will see that there is lots of people angry mailing them, which could lead to them rethink what they're doing. We should email them daily to make noise and keep up the pressure. Doing nothing is worthless, so do something. Email them. When many people together protest the sick surveillance law being built by the government and big tech corporations, we can stop them. One person alone can do nothing. If 10 people out of 10,000 protest against the surveillance, those 10 people will get punished. But if 1,000 out of 10,000 people protest, what will the government do about it? If enough people stand up for the freedom, their government can't do shit. And let's be honest, if 1,000 out of 10,000 people go on the streets, that still means we have 9,000 useless pieces of shit. Seriously, those people who keep saying that they have nothing to hide are so badly brain dead, it's unreal. Some people say privacy is dead, but those are the same people using Google Chrome as their f***ing web browser, as their search engine, as their mail, as their maps, you name it. Privacy is not dead, those people brains are. If you want privacy, go get it, it's right there. Could you imagine waking up one morning and seeing this in front of your window? Not just one, but four surveillance cameras right in front of your sleeping room? This is happening in Germany right now, and while I know what I would do if this shit was built in front of my sleeping room, that's the problem with everyday people. They don't fight back. Whatever the government does, they just accept it. But that isn't all. Germany is now building facial recognition surveillance cameras from a Chinese state-controlled company. The German police use these cameras to spy on normal citizens. If that doesn't sound bad enough, this Chinese company, namely Hikvision, is involved in military products. We are hitting new levels of insanity every passing month. Facial recognition surveillance doesn't belong in a democracy, it's simple as that. They don't use these surveillance cameras to find terrorists or pedophiles when they themselves are the real predators. They will use these surveillance cameras to find and silence anybody who says anything that they don't like. None of this has anything to do with safety or security or protecting kids. What they want is complete control. What can we do to stop online surveillance? And what can you do right now? One major step in the right direction of digital freedom is to replace the spyware crap that most people use with privacy alternatives. One of the easiest steps to take is replacing Google Search with, for example, SirXNG, and Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge with LibreWolf or Movad Browser. According to multiple sources, Google leads the global browser market share with around 60-70% to worldwide, which is really strange considering that Google banned Adblock from their add-ons and that there are other free browsers out there who don't track their users and support Adblock. One major problem that affects everybody is location tracking. To prevent your phone's SIM card from constantly exposing your location, you should buy yourself a Faraday bag, which will block all signals so nobody can spy on where you are. 
I'll put the link in the video description. Let's take a look at Google Android vs LineageOS. For those of you who don't know, LineageOS is Android, but without all the junk from Google and other companies. Basically, it's a clean system without any pre-installed garbage. On the left, we can see active processes on Google Android, while on the right, that's Lineage. On Lineage, I've only got 4 active processes, which means the battery lifespan will be higher compared to Google Android. But this OS doesn't only increase battery lifespan, it also massively boosts privacy. In fact, the spying on devices running Google Android is extremely bad. Besides built-in trackers that collect your data, here is a list of all permissions that Google has on every single phone running their operating system. Location, physical movement, Bluetooth, body sensors, phone calls, camera, external storage, SMS, record audio, modify settings and of course your contact list. Meaning if a person gives you their phone number and you decide to store their number combined with their real name on your phone, you are exposing that person's real name in combination with their phone number to Google and any other application on your phone that has access to your contacts. But it's not only Google Android that's complete spyware which eats away your device's performance. Microsoft Windows by default is out of control. There are so many unnecessary services slowing down your system, it's a real mess. I do have a video guide on this channel that will show you how to easily disable all the services you don't need. Turning those unnecessary services off will give your PC a performance benefit for free. I keep hearing people complaining about Microsoft forcefully updating their computers without consent. So for those people who don't like not having control over their own hardware, if you want to stop Microsoft from connecting to your personal device, you can easily do that with a single click inside of Portmaster. For those of you who want to get rid of Google search, most people probably use DuckDuckGo or StartPage because they think they are private, but that's probably not the case because DuckDuckGo first of all connects to improving.duckduckgo.com and it also has a massive amount of advertising requests when we scan their domain. That's questionable behavior for a search engine that claims to not track their users. And let's not forget DuckDuckGo behind closed doors had an advertising agreement with Microsoft. Startpage on the other hand sold out to System1, which is an advertising company. I leave it to you if you want to keep using that service. Luckily there is SirXNG with a whole list of public instances. When you choose one, just make sure Let's Encrypt is the certificate provider, as they are more or less the only trustworthy provider out there. Now, when you select an instance, make sure under Settings within Privacy, the search method is set to Posts. If it's set to Get, that means your search requests could potentially be locked by the provider. If you want to add the search engine to your browser, simply right click in the search bar and select add. Then you can select it as default in your browser settings. For most people the best option is probably to just use the SirXNG instance hosted by Rob Braxman who is a privacy professional. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No sir. It does not. Not wittingly. That was a witting, bald-faced lie. There's no saving an intelligence community that believes it can lie to the public and the legislators. Seeing that really meant for me there was no going back. To be honest, if surveillance keeps rising as it is now, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years from now there could be police robots patrolling the streets, possibly committing violence against any citizens who don't comply. Would you want your future kids to live in a world like that? If you're a clippy, share this video.